Hey everybody, Vivian here with a tutorial using Scraps of Darkness's February kit. This is called Simple Pleasures, and today I'm going to be using some papers in the kit from Prima. This is their engraver collection, and I have to confess, when I saw it, when it was released, first released online, I liked it. But when I actually had it before me and was able to touch it and really see it, <laughs> uh, I fell in love. I'm really excited about these papers. The pre distressed creams, um, ranging from you know the whites all the way to the blacks, and all just the little details, the script, and the beautifully etched flowers. I'm going to be altering a corrugate box. As you guys know, I moved recently and I'm still, I don't know how long I'm going to be saying this to you, I'm still not able to locate a bunch of my stuff, but there are plenty of boxes. So this is a box that our modem came in for the computer. And um, I used some black acrylic paint just to cover the edges just in case they were going to be exposed and to give it a, a finished feeling. And I just cut these pieces to size. Um, I tend not to like cutting on the lines that are already there. So I try to cut pieces where um, the straight edges were actually on the interior of the piece and cut up the, the, the rectangular shapes that were on the page. So I Mod Podged it all down, and here it is. Um, I also uh, sanded some of the edges, and I, I, as you've seen with some of my other projects, I actually prefer to leave the inside as is, um, so you have a remnant to remember what the piece once was. Um, and I'm just going to sand it a little bit more, um, trim and sand just to make sure none of those edges, none of the pieces of paper interfere with the opening and closing of the box. So at this point I'm just going to lighten up some of the darks um, in anticipation of the technique I'm going to share with you. I think it's going to be important to lighten some of them up a little bit. And I'm just going to randomly paint some gesso um, over my box. I might have used a different paintbrush, but this is the foam brushes are all I had available, and they work quite well for most things. This is a Maya Road canvas tape that also came in the kit this month. I'm really loving the canvas tapes. I think I'm loving them a lot more than I'm loving the washi tapes. Um, I'm loving them especially because of the way they go down on your surface and also the way they take media. So this is some great art anthology stuff that we received. So this is uh, called Cinnamon Toast. It's an art anthology colorations spray. Um, it's a warm toffee brown. And if you didn't know, you know, Misting is not the only way to go with mists. I, for this project, I just poured it out onto my um, silicon mat and used it like a transparent watercolor paint. By applying it in this manner, um, it really very nicely achieved an aged effect on the project, very much like a tea dye. Um, and I think I actually often drizzle uh, and paint with mist a lot more than I actually missed. So here's the technique. We have shaving cream, not shaving gel, shaving cream, and I'm just spreading a thin layer on the top, on the back of a plastic plate. I have a great book from, uh, written by two people, our Darlene Olivia McElroy and Sandra Duran Wilson. It's a surface treatment technique workshop. And um, this technique can be found in there. Um, I've been playing around with it using a bunch of different types of media. So this time I'm using the mists. Um, you can use this with acrylic paints, uh, watercolor paints. And I'm doing it today with the mists that came in the kit. And that includes the cinnamon toast 
and this beautiful bright orange called Juicy, and another sort of ochery yellow called Timeless. Really beautiful colors. And um, swirling that up on the surface of the plate to create a little bit of marbling. Um, I have another video I just made with another project. I think I just mentioned it. Um, and I said this in the last video. I think if you are working on a 12 by 12 totally flat surface, you could press down harder. But because I have been working on corrugate boxes, I just sort of lightly press down, um, putting my stencil right in between. And you could lift it off this point, but I want a little bit more coverage, so I'm sort of moving that mixture around on the surface. I found that with the mists, you end up with a, with a much more subtle, um, very thin effect. And um, another thing with the mists is I would suggest once everything is dry, spraying a, a fixative on top. When you do this with an acrylic paint, mixed with the shaving cream, you get a result that's several degrees thicker. Um, as you can see here, it's very subtle, but quite nice, especially there on the lighter surface, the lighter colored background paper. You can see it very clearly. Um, once I finish sharing with you what it looks like at this stage, I'm going to interject and show you what it looks like when you use acrylic paint. So here's another box that uses the same technique with shaving cream and a damask stencil and uh, Lumiere acrylic paints, which we actually received in a Scraps of Darkness kit um, last month or the month before, which I love the Lumiere paints. Um, okay, so I decided I'm going to leave some of those uh, surfaces, especially the one vertical surface where um, the flowers from the stencil showed up clearly. This is a Donna Downey stencil. It's got some really beautiful blooms on there. Um, and you always have the option of using modeling paste as well. I found that the modeling paste gives you a, a very thick, very thick impression once you pull off the stencil. And because we moved, I can't seem to find uh, an old card or um, a palette knife. So I'm using the the tool you use to put stucco on your walls because we're just in the middle of getting the room, my craft room set up to paint. Um, so do you see how much thicker that is? And um, very, very cool. So I think with the modeling paste, you can get um, a level of dimension that's just a couple, uh, well, you can make it several degrees thicker than you can achieve with the shaving cream. Shaving cream is just a great option because it's so affordable, it's so readily available, whereas sometimes some of these um, pastes and gels actually can be quite expensive, especially if you don't have uh, a coupon in hand when you go to purchase it. Um, so once all of that's dry, um, I decided to color up my my poppies, I guess that's what they are, with some of these coloration sprays. Um, if you're nervous about committing, which I felt a little bit nervous this time, I spritzed it with a little bit of water first um, so that I didn't get any like strong shoots of mist on there. And um, once I felt more confident um, and some of these mists dried on the surface, I just went in straight with um, with the mists without any water. So you can sort of build up your mists instead of, instead of having to go whole hog all at once, depending on your mood. This um, brown, um, I'm really enjoying the darker colors, how they sort of puddle in the crevices left by the modeling paste. Um, when you allow those darker mists to settle in the nooks and crannies, it really helps the whole project pop. And I think that's definitely case, the case when I use the hot glue as well. So here we are so far. It's not 100% wet, dry yet, but here it is dry. And you can see all that beautiful texture. Now this is 
a new product I've, I was able to try out this time because it was included in our kit for Scraps of Darkness. It's called Dimensional Crystal. And you could do a bunch of different things with this. I'm thinking I might even try out my hot glue stuff using this product. But I decided to create little balls in the center to indicate the center of the bloom. And that takes a little while to dry. So once that was done, this is still wet, um, I let it dry overnight. And um, I was really very happy with the way the surface turned out. And I didn't want to be redundant and add more flowers when I, I've already got some flowers that I really loved on the surface of my box. So I just used this sentiment, this chipboard sentiment that came in our kit from Fab Scraps, gessoed it, spritzed it, and then added some sorbet. This is a dimensional paint from Art Anthology, and the color of this one is chocolate. So this, these uh, sorbets are somewhat translucent, and they've got a little bit of shimmer. Um, so I painted that on there in sort of a... Um, uh, a hatched fashion. Uh, I experimented with just patting it down for some texture but ended up liking just a hatched pattern so on the diagonal one way and on the diagonal the other way. So I let that dry and then I just hot glued it onto my box and here you have the final project. I, I will save the beautiful embellishments from the kit for another project, but I just wanted to leave the surface as was. Um, you can see all the sort of tea dye effects from the cinnamon toast colorations and um, the different effects you can get using your stencil and shaving cream um, and modeling paste. Here's a full shot of the box that I got in Morning Light. And um, as you can see, the shaving cream with the mists provided a very subtle effect, a little bit different than you get with the standard misting through the stencil. And remember, if you use the acrylic paint, um, like I did with the Lumiere paints, uh, you get um, a significantly thicker effect than with the mists. Um, you could try this out, and I'd love to see what you guys come up with, with inks, watercolors. Um, just play around. Shaving cream is such an affordable tool that I think you know it's worth, worth the time to play and get a little bit messy. Um, let me show you some detail shots. Here's a view of the side, and you can get a good look at all the beautiful colors that sort of mixed on, on the surface. And here's a shot. You can see a little bit of that graininess um, from the shaving cream. Um, I'm going to remind you guys, the shaving cream with these mists was delicate until it was dry and set with fixative. Um, and according to the book, this shaving cream technique has archi archival quality that is good, but not excellent. Um, I'm, I actually enjoy the wear and tear that happens over time, so that wasn't a problem for me. Uh, I want to show you a, a project, just a little detail shot, which has um, a surface that's a little, a few degrees more raised using shaving cream and acrylic paint. And with these Lumiere paints, you get a real neat little bit of marbling, plus a little bit of grit that when you actually touch it, is quite soft. Um, and this one did not, with the acrylic paint, did not need any fixative or anything like that. It was set. And I want to show you a detail of these blooms on the box for this video when they are in the sun. And I just love how the the colors uh, got darker along the little grooves that happened along the edges of the shapes of the bloom. And that dimensional crystal glis glistens very nicely. And I think each um, 
dispenser of this type of product, this dimensional paint. Um, I think a couple different manufacturers make it, make them um, should be handled differently. I found that this with, with this dimensional crystal, in order to make little balls, it was really helpful to push the the little tip right up against the surface, and that helped the product spread out in a way that was round and, and uniform. When you hold it away from the surface, you end up with like um, something a little bit more stringy. Thanks again to Melinda Kelly at Scraps of Darkness for another gorgeous, gorgeous kit. Um, my next video, which should be available very shortly using the same kit, will hopefully use um, a lot more of the embellishments so I can give you a look at some of the beautiful, beautiful um, elements included in this Simple Pleasures February kit. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet here on YouTube, it's Contadina K. And um, I'm hooked up elsewhere. My blog is contadinak.wordpress.com. Hope to see you again really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.